Hello and welcome back to Kiki's Tarot Cafe. <laughs> I'm still getting used to saying that. Um, basically, I read tarot cards. Um, maybe I will do other types of content in the future, but for now that's basically all I'm doing. And um, today's reading is basically a message about your love life. For those of you that are new to pick cards, you basically select a pile based on your intuition or something that you feel really drawn to, and that'll be essentially your reading. Um, for the first pile, we have Shaura. Um, these are characters from card captors. You don't have to worry about their meaning or whether or not you know the anime. Just um, just feel whichever one you're drawn to, and yeah. So for the first one we have Shauron, um, for the second one we have Sakura, and then for the third one we have Yukito. Um, so go ahead and select your piles, take the time to meditate if you feel like it, and I'll see you at your timestamps. Alright, so this is for pile number one who selected Shaoran. I just want to say, I take a minute to kind of meditate with the piles before I actually record the reading, and I just want to say this is a pretty specific message, and I'm just going to say what the message is now, and if that does not relate to your situation, consider a different pile. Um, but basically, this is a infidelity situation, so if that's not a message for you, <laughs> the same your pile. So for the Sakura playing cards, we have... This is a spread. I haven't done spreads in a minute, and um, so I'll just tell you kind of like their meaning, and then I'll go over the cards individual meaning. So this is you. This is them. This is uh, this is how you see them. This is um, your relationship. This is how they see you. This is. Okay, yeah. So it's you, them, the relationship, how you see them, how they see you, how you see the relationship, how they see the relationship, and then kind of like the outcome. <sighs> okay, well, you are essentially very disappointed. Um, you might be even, well yeah, you're kind of like emotionally distraught. Um, it's weird because the eight of spades can indicate like a doctor, but I don't think that's like the message, but it could be more metaphoric, like maybe in this relationship you kind of played like I don't want to say play the psychologist, but maybe, like, you've had to deal with a lot of this person's, like, shadow side or a lot of their, like, trauma from the past, and, and it's kind of, like, um, I don't know, that's unfortunate that you felt, you know, maybe that's a message for some of you, that you kind of played the role of, like, a therapist in addition to a partner, which is not, um, a good situation to be in, and they are kind of, like, I see them as like immature, um, maybe even like, because usually it's supposed to be like youthful, but just given the situation, it, it just feels like immature and impulsive as opposed to like, you know, s someone who's like youthful and cheerful and happy. It just seems like impulsive and unable to deal with their emotions and so the relationship is now suffering because of that and um you you're facing a setback right now i feel like 
I'm just gonna say, like, right now, I'm not the type of person that's like, you you have to leave this relationship or you have to stay in this relationship because you're twin flames. Like, that's so fucking toxic. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm not gonna tell you what to choose. I'm just gonna present the situation and give you things to consider and um, kind of, you know, you can make your choice from there. So this is like a setback. So I'm gonna read this as like, you haven't decided as to whether or not you should leave. And I know like for a lot of people, they're like, what? They cheated, like you should leave immediately. And if that's how you feel, like then, you know, you stay true to that. But for some other people, like, it's more complicated than that like maybe you have children maybe you're married maybe you've already settled down and like you know maybe you know people do make mistakes like (sighs) clearly that's a big mistake but um I don't know like it's different as like someone who I'm not trying to justify like cheating or anything but just I'm aware that the situation can be more complicated than than just like this person's shitty and you need them out of your life and a lot of the times that is the situation but you know there are couples who have uh worked through it and it's a lot of work but um you know again depending on your situation that might be um work that you are willing to put in so I just see kind of a setback right now it's kind of like clearly that's a giant fuck up and you just you don't even know how to continue from that and you see them as someone you can't trust anymore because clearly um they might even be giving you a lot of phone calls or like trying to contact you and you're just kind of like ignoring um yeah so like you just feel like you can't trust them and then they see you Like, they can't access your feelings. Maybe even, like, prior to the situation. Um, They just felt like uh, you were someone they couldn't... Almost like you you suppressed your feelings and they they didn't have access to them. They they might even see you as very moody. Um, Well, I mean, like, who fucking wouldn't be after this? But, um... Yeah. They... I don't know they might even see you as having a lot of nervous energy mm. you have the nine of spades which is how you see the relationship and it's basically like you kind of see it pretty toxic <laughs> um if the relationship were a person it'd be like ill <laughs> i don't want to say terminally ill but it might as well be like this is probably one of the worst cards you could get like you just see this relationship that's like pretty toxic for you you are not in a good space about it and um the way they see the relationship i mean clearly i think they know they fucked up but um it's almost like they're getting the feeling like you've already decided to move on Because when I see a a spade, it makes me think of an ex, whether that be like an ex-wife or an ex-boyfriend, whatever. But that's kind of like the energy, like, they went from being the jack of clubs to like the jack of spades. So, um, yeah, but your outcome is the joker, which is interesting because I usually take my jokers out of the, out of my decks, but this one... I decided to keep it in and it came out so it's kind of like it can go either way at this point it just depends on literally where you want to take it and we can explore that I'm pretty sure your tarot cards just pretty much back up what I've said yeah so like we have the three of cups which can indicate you know, celebration, but because you received the Three of Swords in combination with it, it's like, um, infidelity. And then you have death. (laughs) Death and justice, which is interesting, so. Um, okay. 
so these are like infidelity you're clearly heartbroken you feel like there's freaking swords in your heart um death can be you know like the end of a chapter and it can also be transformation or renewal so it's like you know you can choose to walk away and move on or you can um try to transform this and, and you receive justice so it's like you know if you did walk away that is kind of their justice they probably didn't deserve to have you they're gonna cheat on you but um you know if you did choose to stay just make sure that you're not like automatically taking them back <laughs> let them suffer a little bit but um but also like maybe you just even need the space not necessarily to let them suffer but just like for yourself mentally um the two of cups is kind of like you um the two of cups makes me think of like these two lovers that are like very well in love <laughs> i know that's so lame like i couldn't think of other words but but it's in reverse so it's kind of like Maybe you felt this person was, like, your ideal partner, but now it's, like, all shot to shit. Um, and it could also talk about your partner and their feelings. Like, well, when the Two of Cups is in reverse, it feels like you don't have emotional access to your partner. So maybe there was, like, some sort of distance that, um... And I totally forgot. I was trying to think of another meaning for the Six of Diamonds, and it's separation. So they're pro you guys might be in separation right now, which is part of the justice. Um, but in reverse, it's kind of like, I don't know, like, I feel like maybe you guys had emotional distance before this separation. And I'm not trying to say like, it's your fault because you were emotionally distant. Like clearly you don't resolve your fucking relationship issues by cheating on someone, but, um, I don't know, I feel like maybe there was something else, some kind of disconnect prior to any of it. And now, like, this person that you probably saw as your ideal is kind of like... <sighs> um, you know, they basically stabbed your heart, which is unfortunate. Um, and then you have the star in reverse, which is kind of feeling like your wish isn't com gonna come true. So maybe you felt like, I'm not sure about your situation, but maybe you wanted to marry this person and now that you found out they cheated on you, you're like, well, <laughs> I don't even trust you. So like, that's not gonna come true. Or like, maybe you were so convinced that this person was like the only one for you that now that that's not true, you kind of like don't believe in love. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of telling you, like, to hold on to hope. Not necessarily for this relationship, depending on what you choose. Um, but just, like, whatever it is that you're feeling can't work out is not true. And then you have all must-have prizes, trying to please everyone. So that's an interesting one. Um, shine bright like a candle. You will make it through this. So that's nice. And it's also, it's funny that it has, like, star, like, the starry night painting in the back, because it's, like, the star. So they're kind of telling you, like, you, you will make it through this. You will have, um, basically, I don't want to say fix the situation, because, you know, depending on your choice, that might not be the outcome, but, um, it just feels like whatever you're feeling hopeless about, your faith will be restored. And then law is not justice. You have another message about justice. I don't know what that's about. Like, I mean, clearly you probably feel like you were treated unfairly or like maybe you put, especially if you felt like, you know, the therapist in this relationship, it's possible you felt like you put in so much work and like, this is how you get treated. Like, it's so unfair. And, um also kind of like um yeah just i don't know even if like you do walk away from the situation you still feel like 
like that wasn't enough punishment, I guess. Um, I don't know, like there's this feeling that's gonna stick with you about like you were treated unfairly. And this, oh not this one, sorry. <laughs> uh, the trying to please everyone is interesting because I've heard a lot of, um, you know, people who, again, their situation is more complicated than just like a boyfriend I was dating for two months or something. It's like, you know, you have established lives with another individual and the other person says they want to make it work um you know things can be more complicated so it's kind of like when those situations happen a lot of the time the individual will go to their family and they're like oh my you know so and so cheated on me and your whole family will be like well fuck that person leave them and so now you know if you're feeling like you want to fix this relationship if you want to make it work um now you feel like you're trying to please your family almost um it could also be a message of like trying to please you know if you have children maybe you're trying to keep it together for the children even though the relationship no longer serves you emotionally or maybe it's like a very um like frowned upon thing maybe it's something very shameful in your culture to like have a divorce so even though you want to leave this individual it's like the shame of having a divorce is stopping you or even the shame of your family is stopping you from taking this person back so it's just kind of like don't let other people influence your relationship choices not even tarot card readers um basically yeah try not to please other people when you're making important decisions about your love life love yourself first okay give your relationship a chance deception so this isn't necessarily talking about you know if you've made your up your mind to leave this person and you're so dead set on it like this isn't saying give the person who cheated on you a chance it's kind of saying like um like if now because this love of your life cheated on you now you have kind of like this hopelessness about relationships in the future so it's kind of saying like give future relationships a chance but um if you did choose to stay um there is a lot of self-love that has to be done maybe like you know again i'm not gonna i'm not sitting here and blaming you like oh you emotionally withdrew and that's why they i hate people like that like well you can't keep your man like no your man can't keep it in their pants it's totally not your fault um but um yeah kind of like maybe there was that distance we were talking about earlier like maybe there was some kind of issue internally that caused you to have emotional distance from your partner there's also, um, you know, like, don't think that you're unworthy of love just because, you know, someone has betrayed you. Um, and then clearly deception. I remember when I was first pulling them up, I, <laughs> um, when I just pull them up, I don't really read them. I just kind of like shuffle and pull them out and I was like, oh. Oh, this looks kind of like a good relationship and then I saw this and I was like wait I mean the fuck and now like clearly that's why I meditate with them prior to like actually giving the reading because like I started off thinking it was a good relationship and then I was like no <laughs> no it's good to like reflect but anyway um so yeah then you receive the star <laughs> bruh yeah the star so it's kind of like your wish will come true whatever it is that you want and you should have hope and don't become faithless just because you know someone has betrayed you there is still hope for whatever it is that you choose 
and the hermit the hermit is about withdrawing so just like if you do choose to take the person back don't like automatically take them back like truly think about is this what you want is this what's best for you um reflect on why you want to take them back you know what are the benefits really contemplate that the hermit is like finding wisdom you know in in solitude essentially and the original hermit card is uh portrayed with a man holding a star so literally like look for the star the star is clearly a big symbol for you um maybe when you feel hopeless you know ask your spirit guides to like send you stars or something um hmm If you did choose to leave, however, the hermit is more of self-reflection. And it can still be, you know, a message for you if you choose to stay, but it's just kind of like loving yourself first. Kind of like the shadow work that needs to be done. Not only what probably had to be done before, you know, the situation, but also now the additional trust issues that you have and the self-image issues that you have because of this betrayal. So it's kind of like um, just meditating or like spending a lot of time alone thinking. Don't let, don't, you know, go to your family that's gonna be like, leave him. Like, don't let them influence you. Or maybe your family's telling you to stay when you wanna fucking leave. Like, be by yourself and think think about it she looks so peaceful she's like with her eyes closed she's really the clouds are kind of like leaving her mind just really really stop and think about what it is that you want then we have um mars and mercury so a big situ sorry if you can hear like the noise happening outside and then for your cloud cards you received the bubbles and the Libra. So <laughs> it's so funny you got Mars and Libra. It just makes me think of like Aries and Libra or like Mars and Venus. It's kind of, maybe you felt like this was your ideal partner, so that would really, you know, that's, that sucks and that's disappointing. I'm sorry, um, but but I feel like communication, regardless of whatever it is that you choose, it's gonna it's gonna be the biggest especially if you choose to stay just communication is going to be so important um between you know your needs or what needs to happen even if you like choose to leave if the situation is really complicated like you know you still need to communicate don't like y you know if the divorce is getting nasty like i don't even want to start talking about things that i don't understand you know like divorces are fucking serious but yeah, just try your best to have, like, I, I'll say the best communication that you can have for the day. So if, you know, today you have, um, all you can give is 50%, well then try your best to give that full 50%. But, um, you know, if the next day all you can give is 12%, then try your best to give that 12%. Like, whatever the best you can have for that day, like, communicate, communicate, communicate. Mars is also about action. So, like, M Mercury kind of lives in your mind, but Mars is, like, action-oriented. So, like, eventually you're going to have to step out of, you know, that hermit mode and you're going to have to actually make a decision. So, um... Just make sure you're clear on that decision. You know, if you did choose to walk away and the person's like, no, you have to stay with me, you have to stay with me, or your family's like, you have to stay with them, like, no. Like, stay clear to your intent. Um, yeah, just basically put your intent uh, into action and don't let anyone stop that. The Libra is about balance, so whatever, you know, you choose again. Um, make sure that it's what's gonna keep you mentally balanced. Don't do it just because someone else thinks that's what's best for you. Don't do it because your partner's making you feel bad and trying to make you stay. Like, 
do what's going to keep you the most mentally, like, spiritually balanced, what's going to be best for you in the long run. And, um, and the bubble, <laughs> the bubbles, uh, is basically about a fresh start. So you think of, like, taking a bath, right? The bubbles, it, like, cleans you. So whatever it is that you, you choose, like, just really emphasize on the new start. Try your best not to bring the baggage of the old situation into the new one and if that's you know you leaving then you know do the work that you have to maybe go to therapy if you have to um i know that's not a viable choice for everyone but like do do the best you can to like work on yourself and to make sure you don't bring the baggage into the new situation and if you um you know, choose to stay, that doesn't necessarily mean, like, forget everything the person did and start fresh, like, no, that person clearly betrayed you, and it's just, like, um, I almost think of, like, a fresh start in the sense of, like, lay down the law, and it's funny that you got, like, justice and, like, law that isn't fair, so it's, like, even if you do have, like, the set of rules or the set of demands that your individual needs to make in order for you to gain that trust again um you know like at the end of the day it's still not gonna feel like like you know what i mean <laughs> they fucking cheated on you like it doesn't matter how many rules they follow like it's possible at the end of the day that you're still gonna feel like th this isn't fair, this isn't making up for it, but, um, you know, if you did choose to stay and then you feel like it, it it's not working, like, don't feel obligated to stay just because you chose to, like, walk away if you have to. Sometimes, you know, you can, you can change your mind, essentially. But, um, yeah, just be aware that you're gonna still have that feeling for a while before... The person even is close to gaining your trust again <sighs> oh my god I feel so like <laughs> emotionally exhausted and sorry um, that sucks and like and subscribe no seriously though like I hope this was helpful I'm not one to tell you what to do or what to choose but just make sure you don't let other people tell you what to do or choose um really really self-reflect um yeah and i hope that was helpful please leave it in the comments if so because it's nice to know i'm not talking to myself um good luck hello pile number two of you selected soccer um this is your video sorry if you can see my pants I'm kind of waiting on the table like a weirdo. So I'm gonna do a spread and I'm gonna kind of explain the, I guess the meaning of the position of the card and then I'll actually get into the meaning of the card you received. So you received the, this represents <laughs> um, you, this represents them, this represents your relationship, this represents how you see them, Oh, this is much nicer than the previous group, uh, alright, then you received how they see you, how you see the relationship, how they see the relationship, and the outcome and it also makes a heart so you want to go ahead and adopt this spread it may be very helpful for you <laughs> um, all right so you are um, I almost want to say like business oriented I don't want to say you're like money but like <laughs> Diamond is, you know, a financial, a material suit. It is also the card of legal letters. So I'm, I'm getting like business kind of situation, not just, um, 
strictly money you know like maybe you're a business person um and they are joker <laughs> they're literally a joker card um not the terrible you know batman villain but someone who's like a wild card they're fun they like to explore they kind of bring like life and youthful energy into your life which is super precious love it the relationship itself is the two of cups or the two of hearts <laughs> And that's kind of like, you guys kind of feel like each other's ideal partners. It's a uh, very, it's a very love. I'm getting like a <laughs> puppy love kind of like, like when it's starting um, and it's kind of like the honeymoon phase. Like you guys are just really in love with each other. You see them as someone who's balanced, someone who is stable and reliable. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um it's also the the card of sexual relationships so maybe you guys have a lot of good sex but i'm not here to talk about that so like good for you um then you have the ten of clubs which is how they see you and it's kind of i'm getting business again this is literally a business card maybe you guys are business partners i also see traveling for business maybe they like to travel a lot or they like to take you places um to get you away from business even maybe <laughs> or maybe as an inspiration for your business they're they're kind of like um you guys could even be business partners honestly i do however see the king of swords i feel like maybe you had a bad breakup with someone else and you're kind of bringing that baggage in um but we'll talk about that later. The other thing this could represent is how you see the relationship would be, um, it's very mental. Like, you guys mentally stimulate each other. It's very smart. You guys might even have a lot of witty jokes or, like, inside jokes even. Um, very, like, quick-witted, very, um, I just see you guys, like, communicating a lot. Um, it's also someone who's mentally clear. I feel like you guys really know what you want out of the relationship and you guys know how to communicate that well with one another. Um, and the way they see the relationship, it's again, money. What the hell? Are you guys like in a business partnership? <laughs> it's like business, business, money. Um, they don't see, they're not gold diggers, you know? It's kind of like, they see you as someone who's very abundant or like they see the relationship as very abundant like maybe you guys build money together or you're like building <laughs> I, I heard the word empire it might just be my own head but um yeah so kind of like building that up together it, it it's also means psychic abilities i don't necessarily think you guys are psychic but um <laughs> psychic business partners um I, I think it means more like like you'll think of something and then they'll say it out loud like you guys kind of complete each other's sentences it's almost like you're psychic you know or like uh they'll crave pizza and then you'll bring home pizza and it's like oh my gosh it's like we're we're psychically connected like there's a lot of um it's it's very mental it's like you know spiritual even if you believe in that it's like it, it's almost like you guys are reading each other's minds and then the outcome is the three of clubs which is good luck so like that's great if you guys are in a business partnership um there's a lot of yeah like good luck and just like happiness it could also mean like <laughs> and that's funny it means uh a second chance and because I see baggage here from like a previous relationship, maybe you're like kind of giving love a second chance and like it's going really well for you. So that's amazing. Congratulations. Um, so let's see what your tarot cards are. You received the Queen of Coins in reverse, the Emperor, the King of Cups in reverse, the High Priestess, the lovers oh, and then strength in reverse 
I try not to smush them up, but then if I don't, they get out of frame, and I'm just like, I don't even know how to deal with it anymore. But anyway, the Queen of Coins in reverse. Um, kind of talks about someone who <laughs> has neglected their home life. So maybe you got so caught up in like business um, that you've kind of neglected your love life, and now this person's kind of like bringing this new energy in. Um, it could also mean, like, if you are business partners, make sure you don't neglect your relationship in the place of your business, if that makes sense. Like, it's so easy to come home from, like, you know, your job, and then to c come home to your partner and be like, okay, well, now we're going to work on our business. And then you say, oh, well, I spent the whole day with my partner. And it's like, yeah, but you spent the whole day working. So it's not really, like, like you're neglecting the relationship. Make sure you're not doing that. Um... Just because you guys are, like, you know, so focused on this business, don't forget to, like, actually, um, work. Sorry, I got, like, a- I'm gonna drink some water. Um, yeah, just don't neglect your relationship. And then I see the Emperor- which is like, <laughs> literally, I was talking about an empire. Okay, so, yeah, it's kind of like, I see you guys building an empire. Um, you're kind of on top of your shit. I see, you had, like, business cards, business cards. But maybe they see you as, like, an emperor. Like, you know, the king of the castle. You're kind of like, you have your life together. And maybe because, you know, they are youthful, they kind of feel like they don't <laughs> really have their life together. They kind of see you... They could even put you on a pedestal, or maybe you put them on a pedestal. I do see the King of Cups in reverse, though, and that's, uh, repressed emotions and repressed intuition with the High Priestess in reverse, so that's fun. Maybe you do have issues from the past relationship that you've kind of been ignoring, and then somehow they'll bubble up in new ways, if that makes sense. Like, if you ignore something, it doesn't go away. It just manifests in another situation. You'll just get angry about something else that had nothing to do with what you're really angry about. So, so make sure you're uh, taking care of whatever this emotional baggage is. Um, and don't ignore your intuition about it. Or don't ignore your intuition in general. <laughs> Especially if you guys have psychic abilities, you know, you can read each other's minds or whatever. Um... Yeah, but you you receive the lovers. You guys are kind of like, I mean, need I say more? It's pretty evident. There's even like an angel basically like blessing the freaking relationship. Like, <laughs> um, you guys really, yeah, you really care about another one another. And then you have strength in reverse, so. Strength in reverse is when you feel weak, but to kind of like look inward for your strength or you have a lot of inner strength. It could also feel like um, maybe you're depending too much on someone else for strength. Um, maybe you're even depending on this partner for strength, but like try not to drop your baggage on them. Like, make sure you're dealing with what you need to deal with before, you know before you like play your relationship with whatever it is you're not dealing with leaps fine oh my gosh yes finances and career so like business partners i just i don't it's, they're hammering at home come on getting to know each other so yeah again like i feel like it's like the honeymoon phase like you guys you're like really in love with each other like you really feel like that this person is your ideal partner but like but like it's still the beginning stages so take time to get to know each other don't neglect the relationship just because you know your business partner saturn saturn is chronos it's about time right so taking the time to get to know each other but also um for better or for worse <laughs> saturn makes things last for a long time because it literally is the planet of time 
and it is also uh, the planet of I don't want to say complications, but it brings lessons, I should say. W what a nice bow to slap on a pile of poop sometimes. Saturn brings lessons, I will say. So, I don't necessarily see anything bad. You guys really seem like, um, really happy and really, like, ideal, you know? It's just kind of like there's lessons to be learned about, like, having a lover who is also your business partner and um it, that will come along the way and i also see gemini the twins so it's kind of like you guys feel like maybe twin flames i i don't even know if i believe in that concept but if you do you know maybe that's the energy that you feel like you feel like this person is like your soulmate or like your other half basically then for your are these all in reverse? I'm gonna keep pulling them in reverse. Oh my gosh. The Hierophant. And the Lover. So the Hierophant, um... <laughs> uh, the Hierophant is... It's literally, like, the Pope, right? Like, the original image is supposed to be, like, a Pope or, like, a church official. And so that represents... I'm just thinking of like a church, like a marriage. She even looks like she's in a freaking wedding dress. And to be fair, it's Sakura. She always looks like she's in a wedding dress because she just dresses beautifully. But she, like I'm literally getting like the marriage. Like this is just, um, especially with Saturn, you know, time. I feel like this one's really gonna last. Um, and then lover. So that is the equivalent of the lover's card. You can see they're both number six. And six is the number of love, so don't be scared of it. Um, yeah, so it's like a wedding, and it's like your ideal partner. And also, it's interesting that she comes out as the lover and not the lovers. Just um, make sure you're doing self-love work. Make sure you're dealing with whatever it is that your trauma is. Love yourself as well as loving your partner. And then for your cloud cards, you received the shadow, which is like kind of like fear of the unknown. Maybe you've been avoiding your, um, you know, your emotional situation because you're kind of like scared of the unknown, basically. But this is telling you to face your shadow self and to face your problems because it's not like they're going to go away just because you ignore them, you know. Um... The watery is about cooperation and leading with love. So kind of like try <sighs> It's funny that it says lead with love, like put your relationship before your business, honestly. Um cuz your business will suffer when when you put your relationship after it, but um also lead with love in terms of like you I'm almost getting like a treat people the way you want to be treated I guess so if you want people you know to not treat you the way that past relationship you know ended like don't oh my gosh I don't know like <laughs> it's almost it makes me think of like when you treat someone like they're gonna cheat and then they're like well that's why I cheated like it's a shitty excuse but at the same time like don't do self-fulfilling prophecies, I guess. Kind of, like, lead with love and choose choose love, basically, before, you know, you choose the traumas that you're not trying to deal with. And then your Alice cards, you got falling, the unknown. Okay, so the unknown again. You kind of, like, don't want to deal with that. <laughs> but it's time to, like, change all of that. Then you got curiouser and curiouser, which is about discovery. Uh, weirdness and curiosity. So I, I kind of feel like um, you might even discover different parts of yourself or you might even like have epiphanies, <laughs> cartoon light bulb moments where you're like, oh my god, I didn't even think of that or like I didn't even realize I was acting this way because, you know, I was treated this way in the past. Like I feel like you're gonna have a lot of epiphanies after you choose to face the unknown and it'll help you not only get rid of negative behaviors, but deal with the ones that you can't get rid of or like work with them better. And then the last one, mortality. Life is brave, bright, and beautiful, and you are to live. So 
yeah, like, enjoy life, blah, blah, blah. But also, it's funny that it says mortality. It just makes me think of, like, the moment I heard that word. It made me think of, like, Saturn. It's kind of like you're gonna be with this person forever. It was kind of, or at least until you die. Because, you know, if you believe in a different life. Or maybe, you know, the twin situation. Maybe you have... <laughs> Maybe you will be together in other lives. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and preach about things nobody can prove. But depending on your belief system, this might mean different things for you. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, please. It's not for clout reasons. It's just to know that I'm not talking to myself. Um, I hope that was helpful. And on to the next while. Hello those who selected pile number three with Yuki. This is your reading. So for the playing cards, uh, it's kind of a spread, which I usually don't do, but um, I'm gonna tell you what the position means, and then I'm gonna tell you what the actual card means. So this is you, this is them, this is your relationship how you see the relationship, how they see the relationship, um, no wait, <laughs> how you see them, how they see you, how you see the relationship, how they see the relationship, and then the outcome. Okay, so I see financial aid. Um, it's possible you have helped this person financially in some way whether it was like helping them get their stuff together or whether it was um you know in some cases even paying their bills for them like i just see you being or helping them find a job you, you were helpful financially somehow um i also see they are the five of clubs which indicates new friendships new alliances um maybe even job interviews so maybe like again you help them find a job um maybe they're this is a relatively new relationship the relationship right now however is kind of plagued i'm not sure if like you guys already broke up or if like there's a lot of people trying to get you to break up. Um, it's also possible this is like a fling or something. Because like... You have a lot of clubs. Um, which is kind of like... Fast energy. It's not something that's meant to last. Maybe it's a lesson. Um, you see them as... Someone who brings good luck. And they see you as, like, kind of, um, someone who has their business situation together. Um, it could even be, like, someone who has a message for them. Like, maybe you guys are very aware that this wasn't a relationship that was meant to last. But it is kind of, like, a lesson. You see the relationship cycles so that's interesting uh maybe maybe you guys are like on and off again like a cycle and now you're in separation or maybe you're like um this could be a karmic cycle i'm not gonna get into that because you may not believe in that but um it could also mean like um the separation has caused you love sickness you're kind of feeling like really sad that this is over um they see you as like they kind of put you on a pedestal <laughs> uh they see this relationship as like very powerful like to see a relationship as like a queen is interesting in terms of the energy but for the queen of clubs it's like very confident very um very sure of themselves so it's it's interesting that you got like you know a, a card that's sure of themselves in terms of like 
something that broke up. So I feel like you guys kind of knew this was gonna happen. Um, and then the outcome is a separation. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys are just, um, you're in separation because you need space right now. Like maybe it isn't a fling. Maybe um, you, you just kind of need to be away from each other. Um, and that's why the relationship is like in breakup mode right now. Yeah, so the four of uh, spades is kind of like taking a time out. And you can see that here. <laughs> so the eight of wands in reverse is kind of like feeling stuck. This is a very passionate relationship. So it's it's like very fast moving. You just have like the ace of clubs and the ace of wands. It's basically same energy. Um, but your wands are in reverse here. It's, it's like there's a pause. Um, you do have the ten of... Hmm. Ooh, okay, hold on. <laughs> you have the ten of pentacles in reverse. Um... So it could be a financial situation, right? Because, like, financial aid. Maybe your partner is kind of less financially stable than you are, and it caused you problems. But I also feel like it could have caused you problems with your family. Like, maybe they don't approve of the fact that your partner is not as financially successful. Um, you also received the five of pentacles in reverse, which is interesting because it's kind of like the pentacles are in the window, right? <laughs> They're so rich they can just slap money on the window. And meanwhile, this person's like out suffering in the cold. So it's kind of like, um, yeah. It, it's also the original image, I, I'm pretty sure, is a church. So it's kind of like maybe even religious reasons are causing your issues or like there's some kind of like tradition in your family like that's causing problems here it could also be financial because like the five of pentacles is a financial issue and because it's in reverse i feel like your partner is kind of like taking steps to getting better at their financial situation um it's also inner conflict like there's a lot of <laughs> uh I, I remember the term they used was spiritual poverty so it's kind of like maybe not literal poverty but like maybe there's a maybe they're not religious and your family is super religious or maybe um they're kind of hopeless in a sense and so like even when they start fixing their situation they, they might self-sabotage like there's some kind of inner turmoil situation occurring um, you have the Knight of Swords in reverse, so it's like a, a mind that's unclear. I'm getting the sense that's you, you don't really know what step to take, you're not, you know, you're not really sure. You can't make a clear decision. You definitely don't want to rush into anything, but also like you're in a pause, so you can't really rush into anything anyway. Um, but the chariot is, uh... It's kind of like charging into full speed with pure willpower, if that makes sense. Um, so like once you decide what it is that you want, your will is going to be like, that's it. That's what's going to, and that's what should um, lead the way into whatever it is that you're attempting to have. wake up it's your moment find the lesson discover the purpose in a situation and trust that you are learning and then impossible things working through disbelief imaginative leaps fresh perspective so maybe you feel like you and this person like it's impossible for you to be together but that's not <laughs> necessarily true um there's also a lesson to be learned here either about um, future relationships, you know, if, like, this one completely fell apart and you just couldn't fix it, um, find the lesson and, like, learn from it for your, you know, 
next relationship, but it kind of, I, I feel like because you're in separation now, um, I'm getting the sense you want to be with this person, so I feel like once you find the lesson, once you get that mental clarity, you can, like, move on. You learn from it, and then you'll take, you know, you'll understand what you want, and you'll move forward with that, your willpower, what you want. Um, and then wake up, it's your moment. It's funny that it says it's your moment, it's kind of like, <laughs> maybe you have, like, if it is family members telling you, you can't kind of like it's not their moment it's not their relationship it's not their life it's it's yours so make sure that you're not like wake up like this isn't your mom's relationship you know if this is what you want then keep it uh you received death so that indicates um basically transformation and so I feel like after the separation, the almost, not necessarily the dynamic, but like how you've handled the situation will, um, will <laughs> I don't want to say drastically change, but um, it'll definitely be different than how you guys have been handling it in the world, which is completion. So I feel like maybe this person makes you feel whole, <laughs> but also, um, I feel, especially if it says cycles, like this is something that you've gone through before, either in, you know, with this particular person, or maybe like this is something you experience with every relationship. Like you have a, you bring home, you know, your girlfriend and then your parents are like, no. And then you bring home your next girlfriend and your parents are like, no. And so it's like something you have to constantly like deal with. And it's like the completion of this, like it's the death of that. And it's like the end of the cycle like i feel like you're gonna finally learn the lesson like this isn't their choice to make religious factors so again like that spiritual poverty thing i was saying um maybe they there's religious situations maybe there's financial situations that are like making it difficult for you guys to be together and then it says make the effort Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Um, yeah, so maybe your partner kind of feels like they're left in the dark a little bit. Just make sure you're making the effort, not only in your relationship, but like to make it clear, to make them comfortable. Because that's also not, you know, a good situation for your partner either to be like, oh, I really care about my partner but their family like fucking hates me so that's <laughs> just make sure you're putting the effort in to make it clear to your family like that it's not their choice to make and to your partner that you genuinely care about them and you don't care about any of this other stuff that your family might care about um and then trust to have faith in your situation and your partner you have Jupiter, which is luck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Great planet. Um, I also think of, like, luck with family, too. And then you have Venus. It's also, we call them vanilla planets. Like, there's not really necessarily negative aspects to them. Um, so Venus, again, is about love. So it's like love and luck, basically. Um... <laughs> That's cute. And then you received light and dark. Um, which is kind of like to choose love, essentially. And it's also the message of the darkness would be to um, let nature take its course, you know? So like if, let things happen naturally, basically. Don't try to force anything. If your family isn't accepting to it at first, then like, you know, give it time, don't, don't say like, oh, well, you don't want to accept my partner right now, well, then I'm never gonna speak to you again, like, maybe people just need time, and also choose to lead with love, so, like, even if, you know, they get really angry about it, don't choose to react angrily, choose to react respectfully and with love first, and then the luck, <laughs> which is, 
such a frustrating card is basically the card telling you like you're not really meant to know the outcome like there's a lesson here um and you know maybe you fight to have this person and maybe it doesn't work out like um it, the point is not for everything to fall exactly into place where you think it should be it's the lesson to um it's to learn a lesson basically um so yeah even if it's scary and even if it's unknown just embrace it um i hope that was helpful good luck in your situation um have a nice day